Hey there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM. Throughout April, we're celebrating Warner Brothers, which has been part of the TCM corporate family since Time Warner merged with Turner Broadcasting in 1996. Brothers, Harry, Albert, Sam, and Jack Warner founded the studio 100 years ago this month. Tonight, we have a lineup of Warner Brothers musicals adapted from hit stage shows. Up first, the last great musical of the studio era and the highest grossing film in Warner's history at the time. It's from 1964. Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison star in My Fair Lady. This is the story of a pompous British professor who wagers he can take a poor Cockney girl and turn her into a dignified high society lady. The original stage production premiered in the spring of 1956, promptly becoming one of the most successful shows ever to hit Broadway. Written by Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe, the musical starred Rex Harrison and Julie Andrews. For the film version, Harrison reprised the role of the professor and many assumed Andrews would join him. But producer Jack Warner was not a theater producer. He was a movie executive. He produced the film personally and he wanted a bankable movie star. He'd paid a staggering sum for the rights, five and a half million dollars to be precise, and he wasn't about to risk that money on Julie Andrews, who didn't have any movie credits. Not yet, anyway. As for My Fair Lady, Warner wanted Audrey Hepburn, who made the studio a great deal of money five years earlier with The Nun Story. Warner's plan was to make the film version of My Fair Lady every bit as spectacular and grand as it was on the stage. As you'll see shortly, he succeeded. At the Academy Awards, My Fair Lady was well represented, though Hepburn was not nominated. Julie Andrews was, however, and she won for her screen debut performance in Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. My Fair Lady became a huge success, shot on a lavish scale on the studio backlot. This is one of the last Hollywood films to employ the legions of brilliant craftspeople on which the great movie empires were built. The film also features costumes by Cecil Beaton, who Warner hired away from the Broadway show to supervise both set and costume production. From director George Cukor in 1964, also with Stanley Holloway and Gladys Cooper, this is My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady represented one of the few times studio boss Jack Warner personally produced a film. Warner fell in love with the show when he saw it on Broadway in 1956, and he was determined to make it into a movie. So determined, in fact, that Warner paid five and a half million dollars for the screen rights, then spent another 17 million on production. At the time, it was the most expensive film ever made in the United States. Fortunately for Warner, the investment paid off. The movie was a tremendous success, winning eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The glaring omission from the nominations was Audrey Hepburn. Some felt that snub was because so many people had initially been pulling for Julie Andrews to play Eliza Doolittle. Andrews originated the role on Broadway. In the end, it didn't work out badly for Julie Andrews. She made her screen debut in a Walt Disney production released in 1964, proving her movie star medal and winning an Oscar, Best Actress for that performance in Mary Poppins. The next year, Andrews earned another nomination for The Sound of Music. Coming up, our evening of Warner Brothers musicals continues with one man, one woman, and 76 trombones. The Music Man is next on TCM.